Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Though they cannot match the speed of a fighter jet or carry the same amount of equipment as a cargo plane, helicopters are extremely capable and incredibly versatile. Their ability to take off and land vertically, combined with their hovering capabilities, have made helicopters a staple, both on land and at sea. In fact, the United States first began experimenting with using helicopters in naval operations after World War II. Before long, fleets of helicopters became an essential component of aircraft carriers and other vessels. Aiding in everything from search and rescue and troop transport to anti-submarine warfare and replenishment operations. Over the years, the United States military has experimented with a variety of different helicopter models some of which were specifically designed for use on the ocean. Perhaps one of the most successful of these aircraft was the Sikorsky CH-53 Sea Stallion. Though it was introduced in 1966, the Sea Stallion has proven so successful that it is still in use nearly 60 years later. The Sea Stallion is a heavy lift transport helicopter, primarily used by the Marine Corps for ship-to-shore operations. Despite its age, the aircraft has earned a reputation as one of the most powerful helicopters in the Western world. The average CH-53 is nearly 90 feet long and can carry up to 38 troops at a time. It also has a max speed of around 200 miles per hour and a payload capacity of roughly 30,000 pounds. Like many older aircraft, the Sea Stallion has gone through numerous upgrades and redesigns over the years. The CH-53E Super Stallion, for example, offered increased lifting capacity and an extended range. It also boasted more powerful engines and new composite rotor blades. The K variant, also known as the King Stallion, can carry even more. With an external payload capacity of 42,000 pounds. The main reason the CH-53 continues to see so much use by the United States Navy and Marines is its sheer versatility. With its size and carrying capacity, it is just as helpful in moving equipment and cargo as it is for moving troops. And despite its large size, the CH-53 is actually perfectly designed for use aboard an aircraft carrier. That's because Sikorsky designed the aircraft with space-saving technology. Its rotor blades can all be loosened and arranged so that they're in line with the fuselage. The tail section, meanwhile, folds forward to reduce the length of the aircraft and allow for more accessible storage below deck.
Though it is primarily used to move troops from one place to another, the Sea Stallion is made for combat. Its speed and range allow it to ferry troops directly in and out of hot combat zones whenever necessary. It can also provide air cover throughout various operations thanks to its side and ramp mounted machine guns. The Stallion has a long history of coordinating with troops on land, helping to move equipment, vehicles, and personnel around the battlefield. And because it has the capacity to refuel in midair, the CH-53 can perform these tasks for hours, again without needing to land. No matter the situation, the CH-53 can handle it. Over the years, one of the most critical upgrades made to the CH-53 was its navigation and avionics systems. This expanded the aircraft's ability to maneuver, land, and take off in various adverse conditions. Because of the lack of visibility, performing operations from an aircraft carrier at night can be extremely difficult. Fortunately, the CH-53 and its crews can now see as well as some of the newer, more advanced helicopters currently in use. Speaking of advanced helicopters, the United States and its allies are already well on their way toward developing the next generation of combat helicopters. Perhaps the best example of all is the future vertical lift program. This long-running initiative to create new, more advanced helicopters has resulted in several interesting prototypes. But the most promising by far is the SB-1 Defiant. The product of a collaboration between Sikorsky, Lockheed Martin and Boeing, the SB-1 is a highly advanced helicopter intended to replace the aging UH-60 Blackhawk. Its design incorporates several unique features, including a rear-facing tail rotor, a coaxial rotor system for enhanced maneuverability, and some of the most advanced tactical and situational awareness technology in existence. The Defiant is currently in the testing phase, and so far, the results have been very impressive. For one thing, the aircraft has demonstrated its ability to achieve speeds of more than 280 knots, translating into roughly 320 miles per hour. This is extremely impressive for a helicopter and will contribute significantly to the Defiant's usefulness in the field. The aircraft has also demonstrated superior maneuverability thanks to its coaxial rotor system. This type of design approach eliminates the need for a tail rotor, allowing for improved agility, better hovering capability, and tighter turning. All of these features are essential to battlefield operations and will only become more important in future conflicts.
Perhaps the most essential capability the Defiant has demonstrated is its capacity for maneuvering in very tight spaces. This is, again, the result of the aircraft's unique coaxial rotor configuration. In this instance, the two rotors circle the same axis, but in opposite directions. For starters, coaxial rotors increase lift efficiency while allowing for more efficient power distribution. Again, the lack of a tail rotor enhances responsiveness, agility, and precision in helicopter movements, which helps it maneuver so agilely in tight spaces. Finally, coaxial rotors produce less noise and vibrations than single rotor helicopters, which is always considered in a military situation. Between the CH-53 and the SB-1, it's clear that Sikorsky is a major innovator within the helicopter industry. However, this is not just limited to the military world. For instance, one of the most successful Sikorsky models of all time is the S-64 Sky Crane. This heavy lift helicopter was first introduced in the 1960s, but its ability to lift and transport extremely heavy loads continues to make it a valuable asset in various industries. In fact, the Sky Crane is specifically designed for heavy lift operations. It can lift loads of up to 20,000 pounds using its versatile cargo hook system. This capability makes it suitable for tasks such as construction, logging, firefighting, and military operations. Its unique open fuselage allows the aircraft to be fitted with interchangeable mission-specific pods depending on what is needed at a given time. One area where the Sky Crane has truly established itself is firefighting. Now often referred to as the Ericsson Air Crane after its primary operator, the S-64 can be fitted with a range of unique firefighting equipment, making it a huge asset when fighting wildfires in remote areas. The main way in which the Sky Crane handles wildfires is through a snorkel and water tank combination. The tank can be filled with water or fire retardant holding up to 2,600 gallons at any one time. The helicopter can simply fly over the blaze, release its payload and help extinguish the fire or keep it from spreading. The real innovation, however, is the snorkel attached to the water tank. This allows the S-64 to source more water from nearby water sources, such as lakes, rivers or reservoirs. With this design, the pilot can simply refill the helicopter's tank by skimming the water in a matter of seconds. There is also a suction-powered snorkel that can pull water from sources as shallow as 18 inches. The last tool in the S-64's firefighting arsenal is what's known as a water bomb. This is essentially a precision aerial water drop designed to reduce some of the problems associated with dropping water at high altitudes while moving too fast. With a water bomb approach, the water will rain down on top of the target rather than demolish it, which could potentially spread the blaze. But what's most impressive about this 60-year-old aircraft is that industries continue to find new uses for it. Thanks to its versatility and simple design, the Sky Crane will continue to fly for many years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.